my first experience with abuse, of course, probably would be like so many of us that grew up back in the day, 40s, 50s, 30s, discipline was violence. Spare the rod, spoil the child. We were Christians and we believed that that was discipline. And coming out of slavery, the psychology, if you wanted obedience, we needed to and found it necessary that we beat our children get a beating, a spanking, violence. There is no talking to these savages the way our ancestors was treated on the slave plantation. What is suggested by the Bible, spare the rod, spoil the child. And there are many of our parents who abuse that and inflicted great harm and psychological damage on many of us who were, uh, we grew up under that type of umbrella, that type of mindset or thinking. And then I remember, and we may not call it abuse, but I, never saw open affection. I never saw love between my grandmother and my grandfather, even though they were together for years and years and years. I never saw my grandfather show emotion or affection towards his wife and the wife towards her husband. And this behavior also was among my mother and, and us, her children. My mother never really expressed affection and love, even though when it came down to it, you're not going to hurt her children. And my grandmother, you could see she cared about her husband to the very end. Of course, we may not see this as abuse, but perhaps it's a consequence or a derivative of some type of psychological exploitation or abuse. Then I go on to see my father always fight my mother. Many of us, we've seen our mothers be the aggressors, attack our father, but most times, it is the men, it's the males who abuse the female and children and even your dog Spot. We see abuse. And then growing up myself, I became a victim of abuse from children harassment from children, mockery and ridicule from, from children, being bullied for years and years and years. And I had to uh, fight my way out of that. It was, all these things are so traumatic and uh, physical and verbal abuse. It is traumatic and it is very, very damaging. So being a victim of abuse and exploitation, mind you, a lot of people who were sexually abused, many people involved in domestic disputes and 
different types of exploitation and many of them will turn into abusers themselves. They will become the predator. They will become the victimizer. They will become the perpetrator of these crimes because they were once victims. For me, there was a hatred for this type of behavior. And I have to watch myself because there are those who don't mean to do me any harm, but because of that background, because of that past abuse and exploitation, I might strike out against those. So I speak out against verbal abuse. I speak out against animal abuse. I speak out against domestic abuse and sexual abuse, the unjustified hurt of other human beings towards another, oppression. I speak out instead of becoming a perpetrator or a predator myself, I speak out. There is nobody, no matter how angry or how hateful they are of me, they can show you no evidence that I have brought harm or hurt or done anything to nobody at any time. It is a lie. I am a victim of theft. I am a victim of rape. I am a victim of slander and lies and gossip. And I have become a hater of those things. And I'm happy that I was not turned into somebody who was once a victim and now they are the perpetrator. So here we are now in 2021. And we have this gentleman that goes by the name of Sinetta. And we have this Lady, we're going to say that lightly. I, I, I don't want to, I want to try to keep this silver. But I saw two occasions where this man, who is calling this woman his wife, verbally, severely trying to embarrass and verbally humiliate and abuse this woman twice. Now, I don't have to like her, but something is wrong with this woman. But that's what happens when your mind is filled up with that religious dogmatism. So she submits to the male, no matter how abusive, humiliated, he degrade her in the public. And she tolerates and accepts that. And then, of course, behind the scenes, he might apologize or try to justify his actions. He's an abuser. He's a predator. This man is a predator. Not only is he a predator, of this woman, but he's a predator of soul brothers and sisters, period. He does not care anything about black people. He's a hustler. And he's found a niche because he can present no information. So he goes out and he uses others to bring to the fold so he can use them to benefit himself. And that's what he has done. And those who were smart, they have left him. And then there are those who are seeking praise and, and fame or whatever. 
uh, I will come here because they cannot do nothing on their own. Nobody listens to them on their own, so they find it that it's necessary and it's some kind of advantage that I will come to bring my talent to a person who has no talent. But again, you don't have to like this lady. In fact, she's a victim. Because most victims are docile. They accept the abuse. They think that the abuse is actually a sign of love. So this man verbally abused this woman. And chances are, if he verbally abused and talked to this woman in the public with anger and vulgarity and profanity, one can safely assume that he's violent, that he shook or even beat this woman. The probability is very high. The probability is very high. And he will apologize to her behind the scenes like most abusers do. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. And, you know, blah, blah. Give this old lame excuse for that type of behavior. But if you apologize, no, if you verbally abuse somebody in the public, if you degrade them in the public, if you humiliate them in the public, you should apologize in the public. But he wants to be a man. And there are many men who think the way he do. Put that B in check. Keep your woman in check. This man has a large audience. His audience allows him and says nothing to him that your behavior is out of order. And the women tolerate and accept this behavior from men. Oh, wow. But it's understandable because soul brothers and sisters, the black man and woman of America, the once called Negro, this is the behavior of abused people. We love the abuser. We tolerate the abuser. Oh, they didn't mean, oh, we as a people, oh, let's work with the white folks. They didn't mean it. Think things is changing. We find every excuse in the world to justify the behavior of the abuser, the predator, the perpetrator. And this is what we see right here. The same type of behavior. In fact, those who are abused, many times they blame themselves. I deserved it. Oh, I didn't I didn't mean to I didn't mean to talk too loud to Sanetta. Sister Nanny does a good job of imitating uh Napa. I didn't mean to do that, Sanetta. I didn't do Sanetta is a good man. I love Sanetta. He's a good man. I love Sanetta. I love Sanetta. I love you, Sanetta. This is what. And we do the same thing, you know, with the white folks and, and this government that have treated soul brothers and sisters so evil, same type of behavior, make up excuses for. For bad behavior. But this is the mindset of those who are abused. Abuse and exploitation, degradation, humiliation is a sign of love and caring. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. And his audience says nothing. That behavior is approved. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame.